So let's uh, keep going with the next section of our data frame. And now we will, uh, okay, now that we loaded the data, we actually, we obviously want to, you know, uh, do things with it. And uh, the first, you know, very basic thing we want to do with uh, table the data is, for instance, to be able to access a specific uh, column or a specific row of the, of the data frame. So this is done with uh, these two uh, attributes. So uh, dot columns to uh, will list the uh, columns of a data frame. And as we've already seen, dot index will list the uh, rows of the data frame. So let me just uh, reload my data frame here. And let's have a look at the values returned by these two attributes. So <clears throat> as I uh, briefly mentioned before, the uh, these two uh, the values returned by dot index and dot columns uh, actually their own uh, sort of class of uh, objects. So you see that for the index, it's an, uh, an object called an index range, and for a column, it's uh, an object called an index. But in uh, practice, these uh, two objects are, you can consider them as a, simply as a sequence of uh, values. And uh, again, you can, you know, iterate over it, for instance, with a, with a for loop. Uh, as I've shown before, they're also very easy to uh, convert to a list or a tuple uh, with a constructor method of these classes. So for instance, here, I'm simply, if I want to get the columns as a list, I can simply convert it with uh, by calling a list here. But again, uh, often you don't have to do this because you can uh, directly use them uh, as, a, as a sequence. So with these attributes, I can get values of columns and uh, rows, so uh, indexes, uh, but I can also uh, set new values. So let's say if for some reason I want to change the name of the of the columns, I can do this by simply passing uh, values, uh, by setting a value to uh, df.column. So here you see what I do is that I'm uppercasing all the uh, column names. Okay, so I take the name of the columns, I loop over it, and I convert them to uppercase. And for the index here, what I'm doing is I'm simply uh, adding a uh, prefix uh, passenger underscore and then the uh, number of the of the row. Okay, so with dot columns and index, you can both uh, set and get the values of the column names and of the uh, row names. All right, so I will just, here I just reset the names to um, the column names and the index to what it was uh, before. So for uh, for column names, you see that I'm uh, changing, I'm setting a new value here. And later we will see uh, what, uh, how exactly this, uh, this works, but basically in uh, pandas, you can apply uh, sort of, um, Function to all values of a of a column, or in this case of of column names. And if I want to reset the the index, I can use this uh, reset index uh, method of uh, data frame. So now you see my index is back to uh, the standard, the default, uh, which is simply uh, numbers from uh, zero to uh, the number of rows minus one. Now, if I don't want to get uh, another basic attribute of, of uh, data frame is a shape. So with dot shape, uh, I will get a tuple that contains the number of rows and number of columns in my uh, data frame. So you see here, if I print uh, df.shape, I get this tuple here. So the first value is the number of rows, and the second is the number of columns in my uh, data frame. 
and this this object is a, a tuple. Okay, so now what I can, uh, for instance, if I wanted to get these values, number of rows and number of columns in two different um, variables, two different objects, I can simply uh, use um, value and packing in Python. So I will write row count, comma, column count equals df.trape. If I do this now, you see that I have the row count and column counts in two different uh, variables. So this I know is a value and packing. Is this clear for how it works for everyone, or does someone want that we quickly explain it? I mean, yeah. So if you need an explanation, please uh, speak up. Otherwise, I will skip the, this. Uh, Additional material, but yeah, basically, value and packing is simply attributing, assigning uh, values to several variables uh, on a single uh, line. Okay, so if everyone is clear with this, and it's perfect. All right, so now we've seen how we can access, you know, uh, row names, column names, uh, how many rows, how many columns. Uh, do I have now? Let's see uh, how I can actually access the content of a column or of a, a first of a of a column. All right, so let me uh, reload the data frame here. So the way uh, I mean, there are different uh, ways that I can access the uh, uh, content of a column, but the easiest is to use this uh, syntax with uh, square brackets. Okay, so you see that this. For people who are familiar with R, this will be uh, very familiar to, to them because it's the same type of syntax. So if I do the name of my data frame object, so here df, and then a square brackets, I can then pass the name of a column to access this uh, column. Okay, so if I do df and then uh, the string h, I will get the uh, all the values from the age uh, column. There's another syntax that they can use to access a single uh, column is to do the df dot and then the name of the column. Okay, so df dot age will give me exactly the same result as um, square brackets age. One important difference is to see that when I use the square brackets notation and I, I need to actually pass a string. So the a string that is the name of the column, whereas with uh, the dot notation, I don't uh, pass a string, right? I directly give the, I simply type the name of the column. So if I try this, okay, this does not work. So these are two ways that I can select a single column. Now, if I want to select more than one, uh, then I have to uh, resort to using the syntax with the uh, square brackets. And the way it works is that I simply, and now have to, I can give a list of elements of columns, sorry, that I want to, uh, to get. So here, let's say I want to get the age and sex uh, columns. Then I open, maybe I add a space here to make it clear. I use the square brackets to select uh, columns. And then inside, I have to give a list of columns to select. OK, so in Python, remember a list you created with uh, square brackets. So I open and close square brackets, and I give the list of columns I want to, to get. And now you see that I uh, this returns me a, a subset of my uh, data frame with the two columns that I selected. Okay, just a note here to say that for this particular syntax, I, it really, I mean, I have to pass a list of values. So if I try to pass another type of iterable, for instance, I try to pass a, a tuple. Okay, so this will not work. Okay, so you really have to, uh, to give a list of values here. It cannot be any type, any other type of uh, iterable. All right, so now I'm able to select a single column and I'm able to select multiple uh, columns. Uh, 
with this syntax of selecting a column, I'm also able to actually assign new values to that uh, column. So for instance, here, I have now changed the column citizenship of my uh, data frame. So the last column here, I've set all the values to uh, UK. Okay, you, so you simply access the content of column and then you assign it a new value. So if you pass a single value, then all the uh, elements, all the rows in that column will get assigned this same value as you see here. Uh, ah, yeah, sorry, I forgot to say that if, so if so actually before running this uh, comment here, you saw that I did not have any um, citizenship uh, column in my data frame. So the behavior here is that if a column does not exist, it's uh, automatically uh, created, okay? And if it exists, then it will be overwritten. So here's a, now the citizenship uh, column was already created, it exists here. So if I assign it new values, these values will be created. If the column did not exist, then it would be first created as we just, uh, uh, just saw. So yeah, just a, a warning here that you know when you create a new column or you want to modify values of a, a column, then either you have to pass a single value, in which case all the rows have the same value, or you have to pass a sequence of values that exactly matches the length or the number of rows in the data frame. So if I try to, for instance, do something like this, it will fail because my, remember my data frame has 891 rows, uh, but here I'm passing only three values. Okay, so I get this uh, ugly uh, error message. If I scroll to the bottom, I see that uh, what the problem is. So unfortunately, I don't know why, but, but for some reason, Pandas has always these, uh, whenever there is an error, you always get, um, these ugly error messages, but usually when you scroll to the bottom, you see what the, what the problem is. Um, all right, so we've seen now how we can access the content of a column. Uh, we've seen how we can create a new column or assign new values to the to a column. So another, uh, sometimes, you know, I added, a, sometimes I want to add column, but sometimes I also want to delete them, and uh, to do this, uh, I can use the drop method, okay? So if I call my data frame dot drop, then I can uh, delete, actually I can delete either uh, columns or later we will see that you can also delete rows, but to delete columns, I simply uh, pass the name of the column I want to delete. And then there's another argument that is useful is to say whether the modification should be in place or not. So let's, uh, maybe what we could first do, let's first set in place to false and <coughs> uh, try to do this like that. All right, so here you see I'm, I'm dropping a column on this, uh, on my data frame, and I assign the output to a new uh, data frame here that I call DF2. So you see that this uh, DF2 data frame now has one as uh, the citizenship column is no longer there because I, I deleted it. But in the original data, uh, data frame, sorry, I actually still have it. Okay, and this is the effect of this in place argument. So if it's false, uh, then the, the method or the function will return uh, uh, a copy of the data frame with the uh, column uh, dropped, but the original data frame is not modified. And conversely, if I set in place equals true, 
then actually I'm modifying the original data frame. Okay, so now DF has really one less uh, column. And if you give in place equals true, then the the call to the method actually returns no. So it it, it returns the object uh, no. Okay, you will see in, in pandas, there are many methods that take this in place argument and it's always the same idea. If I set in place equals true, then I'm uh, making a modification on the actual uh, data frame where I'm calling the method. And if I set it to false, then I return a modified copy of the data frame and I uh, do not touch my original data frame. As far as I know, the, the default value is always false. Uh, it's kind of a safe choice, safe choice, sorry, to avoid that you, I know, accidentally delete a, a column in your a data frame. So if you want to modify your original data frame, you always have to put to set in place, explicitly pass in place equals true. Um, all right, so that's how I remove a column from a data frame. Now, uh, another aspect that I want to uh, talk about here is that uh, the types of data that you store in a, in a data frame. So what happens is that each, <clears throat> um, so when a data frame is, is created, each of the column uh, can uh, contain a specific uh, type of uh, data. Okay, and, and these uh, can be, um, so the following, so you can have uh, integer values, you can have uh, float uh, values, so values with a, a decimal. And then we have this object uh, type, uh, which is kind of uh, a category that, that will uh, regroup everything that is uh, basically not a, uh, a number. So if you have a, a strings, they will be classified as objects. So here in my uh, Titanic data set, you see that I have, uh, for instance, all the strings they are, they are of this object type. So uh, name and uh, sex columns here. Then I have age, uh, which is a float. Um, so maybe some of the values have a decimal point. And then we have uh, three columns that are integers. So the passenger class, survive, and family, and then the fare, uh, which in this case I agree should really be a float, and embarked again it's a string, so it's a type object. And yeah, there are other uh, types that are, are possible. So if you have a column with true false, uh, there would be booleans. If you had a column with uh, times or dates, you'd have the date time type. And if you have uh, uh, columns that contains uh, categories, so you know factors of uh, a variable, then this would be a, a category. So if you're not, so by default, uh, when you load a data set, uh, pandas will you know assign, uh, try to assign these object types uh, automatically. But if for, for some reason you're not happy with uh, uh, the assignment that was made, you can change it with as uh, the as type. Uh, method. Okay, so I can call this on a column to change the type of this column. So in, in the example here, uh, maybe let's just to, let's just remind us how the data frame looks like. All right, so here I'm creating a copy of this uh, data frame and I want to change. So the fair column, remember by default, it's uh, it was loaded as a a float, so a decimal uh, numeric values, which is in this case uh, appropriate, I think. But if for some reason we wanted to convert it to a string, then I could simply call uh, the as type method on the column. So remember here, I have my data frame, then I select the column fair with the dot fair uh, syntax, and then I call uh, this method as type on this function and I pass it the type 
I want to convert it to. So here I want to convert it, convert it to a string. And you see that now the type of uh, fair is object, because remember that uh, strings are classified as uh, objects in this object type in a, a pandas uh, data frame. And of course, now that I converted my fair column to a string, uh, then it means I can now manipulate it as if it was a, a string because you know it, it contains uh, strings. So for instance, if I wanted to add a dollar sign in front of each of the row of the values, I could easily uh, do that. Okay, so sometimes uh, because you know, different types of objects have different methods, uh, you can that you can apply to them. Um, uh, this is why it's you know sometimes necessary to convert a certain column into a certain uh, type. For instance, now that my fair is a string object, I can also apply all the string methods on it. For instance, if I want to count the number of times I have a five a value in the in the string. I could use the count method of uh, string. Um, all right, another type of category that is often useful is uh, another type of object, sorry, that is often useful is uh, uh, to make it a category. So if you have a column that contains um, uh, values that are, you know, factors, uh, so typically in the case of the, our data frame here, maybe the passenger class, uh, so the values are one, two, or three. By default, Pandas has loaded this as uh, integers, but maybe I would actually uh, try to want to like, to like to convert it to uh, categories because yeah, the, actually the, the classes more corresponds to categories rather than uh, integers. So again, I will select my column with uh, the dot notation here so df dot p class and then I call as type and this type this time I will give the uh, indicates that I want to make it a category and now you see that the uh, type of my of the values contained in my column correspond to um, category. And now that I changed it to a category type of object, I can use the dot cat method to, for instance, apply all types of methods that are you know, only applicable to categories. For instance, I can easily now uh, rename the uh, categories to, let's say like here, Roman numbering one, two, three, instead of uh, so you know, Arabic one, two, three that we had before. Um, all right, so yeah, we still, I think it's ten twenty. So what I suggest is that we do the micro exercise three here, and it's a bit longer, I think, than the other one. So. Yeah, let's see, let's take uh, five to 10 minutes to do it and we will quickly correct it and then we will have a 15 minute break. A column, we start with a single column of uh, a data frame, which is uh, actually a, a panda, uh, what in pandas we call a, a series object. So a, a series object is simply a, a vector of uh, values. And actually, when you act, uh, a data frame is if you want a, a collection of uh, a series and each column of the data frame corresponds to a, a series. So when I do here PD dot uh, series, uh, what I do is I simply uh, create a new vector of value. So as if I had a single column of a data frame. And here you see that I, I'm filling it with random numbers from uh, between zero and 100, and I create them as strings, and then I add the person. Okay, so we start with this uh, column that we, you know, let's assume that we loaded it from a, 
a data frame. And now, uh, because we would like to work with uh, these values as uh, numbers and not as strings, uh, um, we have to uh, convert them to integers. But of course, if I try to directly convert these strings, it will not work because of the percentage sign here. And uh, basically, a Python will tell me, you know, I don't know how to convert this to a, uh, an integer. So the first thing I need to do is I need to remove the percentage sign from the string. And so because the values are, are strings, so I, I have all the regular uh, you know, methods of uh, base uh, string in Python at my uh, disposal, okay? And one of these uh, methods is, the, uh, I indicated here in the hint, is the strip uh, method. So what does a strip do? I will just illustrate here with a, a small test. So test is just a, a string object here. And I'm see I'm printing it here in the second line. By the way, so I often use this. Uh, these are called F strings. They are very handy in, in uh, Python. So it's it allows you to simply give a string and you place an F in front of it. And then inside uh, with curly braces, you can expand any uh, variable to its uh, its value. So here I will print the test variable. Now let's see. Uh, I, I will now apply the strip uh, method on it. And you see by default, strip removes uh, white space leading and trailing uh, white spaces. Okay. But uh, if I pass it a value, then I can actually remove uh, strip anything that I want. So for instance, in my case, I have a percentage. So if I say strip, and now I give, uh, I pass percent as a the string that I want to remove as an argument, uh, you see that, uh, sorry. I have a typo. Ah, yeah, sorry, because in the app string, you need to use a different type. Ah, yeah, but because I'm already using it here, so it's also it. And I'm still double. All right, so you see that now uh, I stripped uh, the percent value or uh, character from the end of the of the line. So what I can do is I can apply this to my entire uh, vector here, my entire column of uh, values. Uh, with dot str dot strip, and now I will uh, strip the percentage. All right, so now you see my values have become uh, they are still strings. So the the type, if I uh, you can see the type here is still object, um, but at least I got rid of the trailing percentage, and so now I can. Um, easily uh, convert them to, I mean, now it's possible to actually uh, convert them to uh, to an integer. So, and for this, I use the asType method. And here I will say, oops, int for integer. Okay, so I still have the uh, same values, but now you see that the data type is uh, int uh, 64. So it's a, they have become actual uh, numbers instead of being strings. And after this, I could, you know, uh, work at, with it as if they were numbers. So I could, for instance, apply mathemat mathematical operations on it and so on. All right, any, any questions? So if it's not the case, then I suggest we do the 